So one way to understand embodied rhetorics is what do our bodies and the extension of our bodies communicate to the world? How do they shape situations rhetorically? How do they invite or uh, push away uh, people to communicate with, right? That's, that's one way of understanding embodied rhetorics. Um, but my research, I told you, has more to do with martial arts, right? Physical practices. And so when I think of embodied rhetorics, I think about the things that bodies do, not just the way that they appear, right? So I'm gonna show you an example of, uh, and someone also mentioned cultural. Who, who mentioned, yes, okay, so culturally. Rhetoric is different based on culture. So kairos, we already know, is a term that comes from where? Ancient Greece, right? But other cultures have different rhetorical principles that manifest themselves differently uh, in the body or in action. Um, and I'm gonna talk to you about one uh, that we know as Wu Wei. And it comes from ancient Chinese rhetoric, particularly uh, Taoist schools of thought, Taoist philosophies. So where this kind of idea comes from is there's a scholar named Deborah Hawkey who wrote a book called Bodily Arts. And it's this history of rhetorical and athletic training in ancient Greece. So has anyone heard of the Lyceum before, right? The ancient Lyceum. Um, it was a training hall where ancient Greek athletes practiced. So wrestlers, boxers, your javelin, like all the, all the Olympic games kind of stuff. But in that same space, your uh, rhetors and uh, your scholars of the day, the philosophers, were also hanging out in the Lyceum, giving lectures, talking to these uh, athletes as they're stretching, warming up, oiling up, whatever they're doing, right? So all of that stuff was happening in the same space. And so terms of art, like Kairos, weren't only employed to help people understand opportune timing in giving a speech, but in athletic practice as well. So like boxing, anybody box? Anybody do any martial arts? You I box? Do, I do Muay Thai. You do Muay Thai? Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. You, you wanna volunteer? You wanna be my guy? Sure. Since you, okay. So, um, you know how to slip a jab? Yeah, which hand are you? Are you orthodox? I'll just, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do orthodox. You don't have to do anything crazy, right? So if I'm just jabbing slow, right? The timing dictates, okay, you can slip. You don't have to do anything crazy, right? You're slipping a jab. Um, that's Kairos. Stab me with this knife. Come at me. Blah, just stab me just like that. Okay? Like, just, just get me. Right. Yeah, can you reach me from there? Okay, too far. Wow, you got a long reach. Back I up. Got the area. Back <laughs> up, back up. All right, you gotta come get me. Yeah, come get me. Oh, oh you yeah. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Killed me. Okay, you don't so. Normally stab people. So. Oh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not used to stabbing people. Um, so, again, a similar example uh, to take a martial arts practice, physical embodied practice, and to think about it in terms of the chirotic moment. My goal is to not get stabbed. So, he's coming and stabbing me. Come, 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 really yeah, come get me. Right? I'm here. Yeah. Grab, Move. boom, yeah. <laughs> take down, right? The point here is not just, oh, okay, we can use this rhetoric word to think about timing, right? Because otherwise I could just use the word timing. What makes this embodied is when something happens really fast, go fast, like full speed, go, oh, right? I don't have time to think, okay, it's coming. Okay, I need to have my hands this way. Okay, I need to go 45, trap, block, this way. It has to be embodied. So when he goes full speed, right, I am not thinking, do it again. I'm not thinking. My body has trained to recognize that chirotic moment of when to move, when to move my hand, when to strike. Okay? So it's not here, it's all of this. And that was the major point. All right, thanks. No problem. Um, that was one of the major points of how rhetoric and athletic practices go hand in hand. It's not just this cognitive thing, it's fully embodied. That's Kairos, right? Now, so in Taoist philosophy, they talk about this term Wu Wei a lot. Wu Wei basically translates to non-action. Sounds weird, right? So non-action. 
Uh, Taoist philosophy was popular during the Warring States period in ancient China. There was a lot of conflict and changing borderlines and armies going back and forth, just a lot of death all the time. So Taoist philosophy took off for a number of reasons. One was it sort of said this kind of like c'est la vie, life's gonna happen, you could die at any day. Um, don't resist the natural flow of events, right? Go with the flow kind of a thing. This is more of an appropriative way of understanding. So this example, if Kat is grabbing my wrist and pulling me into the van, right? Get in the van, right? It's pulling me, right? So my natural tendency without training is to think, you pull, and I'm like, no, I don't wanna go that way, I wanna go this way. But I'm resisting, my body is resisting the body, right? So you pull, I pull, no, it doesn't work. Instead, when you pull, what I need to do is go with this action, pulling, pull, 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 and escape, right? Grab as tight as you can. Pull as hard as you want. No, don't let go. You're trying to get me into the van, okay? So again, a different embodied sense. Who, who thinks they can, who thinks that looks like I'm cheating, like this is staged? Tight as you can. Grab, 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 pull. Are you just moving towards the thumb? Mm-hmm. Recognizing where the gap is, using the momentum of the pull, going with that flow to do, use the least resistance of my body to achieve my goal. So you can see how that kind of non-action principle can be applied to rhetorical theory as well going the path of least resistance to still achieve that purpose for that audience with the cleanest design. That's right-handed, so what if instead I do okay. this way? Same principle, okay, but I still, Daniel was right that I'm going toward the thumb, so you grab me. This is the gap, I can't go through your hand, I have to go here, so if you're pulling, I still go this way toward the pull, pull. But this, now I just go this way. Okay, so it still works, but your, mm -hmm. your response is Different. Right, so this the whole point here is that you pull this way, and if I pull this way, I'm exercising wasted energy. So pull, I can still do this thing, right? right. But instead, I can conserve my energy. You pull, okay. and it's like easy, right? That's the whole point, is that you go with this flow, you go that path of least resistance, because you don't want to lose sight of your purpose, your audience needs, and you want to make sure that you're designing, whether a self-defense technique or a speech or a piece of writing, according to those principles, right? And so different cultures, different sort of cultural understandings of why things are important, and different ways that they manifest uh, in athletic practice. So I showed you two things that actually come from Eastern embodied tradition, but I have a, I have a good one here for you. Um, from the Western tradition. So going back to Kairos just for a minute, I want you to see this famous knockout, uh, Muhammad Ali fighting the world heavyweight champ, Sonny Liston, knocks him out in the first round in such a way that makes people think that it was maybe a fixed fight. Watch this. There's Ali. Looks like he barely hit him, and then he's down, right? This is like the most feared man in all of boxing, Sonny Liston. You can see it a little better in slow-mo. He slips. It's the timing, right? Right on the chin. So that opportune timing, like that first example that Daniel and I did of slipping the jab, that is how Kairos, a Western term, manifested and was embodied in the Western tradition of boxing. Whereas Wu Wei, that sort of circular motion going with the flow of least resistance, is a lot more common in things like Kung Fu, Tai Chi, Aikido, right? Eastern embodied practices. Um, so when I think about embodied rhetorics, I think about a lot of that stuff, um, but that's, that's me. But I just wanted you to know a little bit more about kind of what I do and some of the different things that you can do uh, in terms of thinking about rhetoric more broadly, right? So.